In this How-To Stats video, I'm going to walk you through a results section that I wrote for a paired samples t-test, also known as a dependent samples t-test. And in fact, this results write-up is based on the paired samples t-test demonstration uh, that is on the How-To Stats uh, YouTube channel. So the results are written in such a way that they're fairly detailed. It's the kind of thing that you could submit for uh, in a manuscript for publication or a thesis uh, or even a lab report if you really wanted to impress uh, your teacher or your tutor I think a lab report written like this would be quite impressive. So the first statement is like most results sections uh, something relevant to the uh, descriptive statistics so to test the hypothesis that the pre-training and post-training resilience means were equal a dependent samples t-test was performed. So you're telling the reader what analysis you're going to do or what analysis you've done and you give them an indication of the uh, results in terms of the descriptive statistics. Now in this case the mean for the pre-training uh, condition was 52.56 and mean is represented as a M and it's italicized. Now I'll note these results were written up uh, consistent with American Psychological Association style, but I think the structure, irrespective of the uh, style that you're using, uh, the structure would be the same. You just might have to change some symbols. Now the standard deviation is also reported, and that's symbolized by SD, and in this case it's 4.56. The same thing was done for the post-training resilience means. So in this test, the hypothesis is that, the null hypothesis is that the means are equal, and the alternative hypothesis is that the means are not equal. Now prior to conducting the analysis the assumption of norm normally distributed difference scores was examined. Now each analysis usually has an assumption so in this case here after the descriptive statistics are reported the assumption of normality is being tested and it's saying the assumption was considered satisfied as the skew and kurtosis levels were estimated at negative 1.29 and positive 1.77 respectively which is less than the maximum allowable values for a t-test which is 2 and 9 for skew and kurtosis these are absolute values now a lot of people don't know this but tests like independent sample t-test and dependent sample t-test and ANOVA are robust to non normally distributed data and you find people running around like chickens with their heads cut off when they don't have a statistically significantly non-normal when they don't have a non-normal distribution well you can have non-normally distributed data and I've got a citation here by Poston in 1984 who did a very extensive simulation study on the robustness of the t-test and so I use this rule of 2 and 9 this is based on a number of studies that I've come across over the years and I'm going to do a separate video on this at some point, uh, a more extensive review of, of normality and homogeneity of variance. In fact, the next sentence doesn't have anything to do with homogeneity of variance, even though the video that I did on how to do a t-test in SPSS anyway, that you should test the homogeneity of variance to assumption, which is true uh, only very theoretically, uh, when your sample sizes are equal, you don't have to worry about homogeneity of variance and in the paired sample t-test you always have equal sample sizes from time one to time two so I don't have a statement about that and it's rare to even come across it in the literature the next sentence I do write though is something that's important you don't see it terribly often it will be noted that the correlation between the two conditions was estimated at R.76 suggesting that the dependent sample t-test is appropriate in this case the dependent sample t-test assumes correlated conditions and in this case the correlation is 0.76 so someone who's resilient at time one tends to be more res tends to be resilient at time two and you expect to see that correlation and I like to see it reported what is exactly the correlation between time one and time two okay so now that I've tested the the hypothesis uh, I mean the assumptions and uh, I'm satisfied with them I go into the null hypothesis of equal resilience means was rejected. I've done the paired sample t-test now. And here's the t of 40 with 49 degrees of freedom. 
and negative 13.69 is the actual t value, and p less than 0 0.001.